because Kaiser Chiefs is a national squad of some kind in inverted commas. Yes. So we cannot fold our arms and laugh and say, hey, it's, it's crumbling. Let us try this professionalized. You see, the, the Manchester United uh, under Ferguson. Welcome to another episode of Sunday World Engage, a platform where we engage people of interest in the South African public life. And our guest today is none other than UDM leader, Mr. Bandubonga Harrington. I am your host, Mamanda Machamalala. Major General, welcome to our show and thanks for creating our invite. Thank you, and also to say I'm a person of interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are, always has been. <laughs> Maybe to kick it off at a lighter note, General, did you really, what, what is it that you helped uh, uh, Minister Blaine's man with? Remember? Ah, that no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 it was, uh, uh, I said to him Kosa after he was attacking us, myself yeah. and Butelis, I did intervene to solve a problem at Wusu. Yeah. And he was nowhere to be found. Yes. And then he says, Olomesa uh, and Kosovotelis think that uh, they are still heads of Pandustan, what, what. Yeah. And I said, oh, I'm going to speak after him. I'm going to get him. Yeah. And so when I stood up, I said, hey, well, you talk too much. Remember that I did help you. That night, I went. Yeah. You didn't even have a license. But I didn't say what kind of license. People assumed it was a driver's no, license. No, it was more license for firearms. So, oh, is it? Okay. So we arranged because they were being uh, threatened uh, ANC cadres. Okay. So we would, we would give them license. We wouldn't give them just guns. But oh, okay. Somebody must go and buy a firearm and then the Transkei government license it. Oh, so we had also covered our backs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. No, thanks, uh, Major Deva. Maybe uh, growing up in Ganduli, uh, born in 1955, how was it growing up as a young boy in, 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 in the, those kind of environments, deep rural areas like that? Typical of a, a rural boy, uh, you look after the livestock of your, uh, your, your father, and also at the same time you go to school. You, after school, you go back and collect those uh, stock and then count them and uh, report back to your parents. And uh, when you have spare time, you go and uh, swim in the river and uh, play soccer a little bit. Uh, sometimes you don't even have a proper soccer ball, but it's, uh, you take uh, the, the, the material, plastics, and then kick and kick and kick. So at least you create a sort of a ball sense in your mm. thinking and so on. Mm. And, and then you joined the uh, Transkei Defense Force, I think in 1976, you were 22 mm. at the time. Was that something you set out to do from your early stages of life or was it a forced decision, so to speak? It was, your latter part I think is correct. Yeah because I was uh, studying at College of Sons of Chief John Luther College mm -hmm. and then Matanzima government, when it wanted prepared to be independent, they targeted to the Sons of Chiefs mm -hmm. and they went to recruit at John Luther College. So my seniors, uh, the first intake in 1975, joined the Transkei Defense Force, which was being established. Mm -hmm in preparation for the independence of Transkei in 1976. Then when I left school, 1975, then I met, I went to uh, work at post office. Mm -hmm. I remember 2nd January I reported at post office. I was recruited in our college at, while I was still in school, mm -hmm. writing my trick. Then I met some of the guys who were my senior at the school who came to do their postal work post, 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 done work, whatever you call it. Hey, they started to talk up to me. I said, hey, you're working here. Mm -hmm. No, man, you can't work in the civilian establishment. You must join the army. I said, no, 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 I 
can't. Yeah. And then they said, no, you play rugby. Yeah. You will play for Transkei Colors because if you join defense, you will always have facilities, fitness and so on. Then I got attracted. So this other time I went to the defense uh, head office in Umtad and I enrolled there. And then they said I must come the following day to do tests. So I passed those tests and then I went back after I was told that I have been accepted. Mm -hmm. I immediately went to the post office and resigned, give them 24 hours. I remember the DG of the Department of Post and Telecommunications said, no, you cannot leave and this and this. And I said, you need to serve a notice. Notice. I said, hey, I'm going to defense tomorrow. Don't make things difficult for me. So they released me. The rest is history. Yeah. And, and I mean, for someone, if you, you joined like that, but then it means it really went well for you because you really rose up the ranks up to the point that you, you, you became a commander, I think, in the mid-80s. How was the life there before getting to the pinnacle of, of the defense? But I must also add that uh, I, did, uh, I didn't fulfill the dream of my mom because he said, 1976, I must go to Forte. Mm -hmm. University. But I said to her, no, I need to have pocket money. Let's, let me work for a year. Yeah. <laughs> but on the way, I came back to tell him that I uh, came back wearing the uniform. I didn't tell her you. that I now joined the defense because I was staying in Tata. And then he said, and this? I said, mommy, please, uh, we couldn't, I couldn't get a space at Forte. So I opted to enroll with the defense and this and that. So said, okay, end of this year, you must know that you go back to school next year. That would be 1976, 77 then. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> fast forward, joined the defense in 1978. That's where we, the bunch of those officers got this acceleration. Mm -hmm. In 1978, uh, KD Matanzima expelled the ambassador of South Africa in Transkei for refusing to hand over the land in Cockstead and also around Queenstown, a land which was promised to him before he accepted Transkei to be independent. And um, he expelled them, and then the military officers of SADF who were training Transkei Defense Force in Umtata were also expelled. So then they were looking for new brand of leadership. Then we were sent to do courses in South Africa, in Transkei, and other neighboring countries. Uh, so I was privileged, therefore, that uh, in 1979, uh, I became a captain. And then in 1984, I went to the do a staff course in Pretoria and we said to Pretoria we are not going to train be trained in specialized military for blacks. Mm -hmm. We want to sit down with the cream, Della Cream, the white South Africans in the same classroom. Yeah. So we were the first ones to have been accepted to do the staff course, senior staff course, which would qualify you as a brigadier or a major general. So, fast forward, came back in 1987, then I was appointed the Chief of Staff of the Defence Force, and then later Commander of the then Transkei Defence Force. Whilst I was the Commander, there were commissions of inquiries which were taking place in Transkei, which were pointing fingers to the Cabinet Ministers that they were corrupt to the core. And uh, they were bribed by Sol Kesner, who gave them 50,000 rents to a total of 2 million. So we decided to intervene. That's how I became the head of uh, military government. Military government in 1988, we collaborated with the liberation movement, PAC and ANC. We sent uh, delegations to Tanzania, which was led by Brigadier Matanzima and Brigadier Keswa, 
to inform the, the PAC in Tanzania that uh, we no longer go to speak the language of Pretoria. The people who were speaking the language of Pretoria would remove them. Then we sent also another delegation led by Kenan Karani to see ANC in Lusaka. And then after that, the relationship between the, the, the us and those liberation movements were good. Uh, we were also requested by the ANC 1989 to, to prepare for the reburial of uh, King Sawata Dalinyemu, mm -hmm. which was a success. And it was at this stage where the people of South Africa, or a trans guy, if they had were to have in their funerals and so on, they would go to those funerals wearing, wearing their colors. And uh, 89, we also unbanned about 33 organizations, mm -hmm. which were banned by our predecessors, uh, Matanzima and Sikau. And in 1990, uh, we began to talk, to, 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 to come up with a plan to protect the leadership of the ANC who were requested again from Lusaka, who were also requested to send military instructors from Transkei uh, Defence Force then to go and train MK in Uganda. Mm -hmm. That operation went well without detection from anybody. And, uh, and we said, if we want this to be secret and confidential, we must never send uh, married soldiers. Yeah to that area because their wives will come with their children crying looking for these people at least a minimum of six months to a year without being uh, with their families and it went well and of course in 1990 when Matiba was released five days after that I went to see him uh, in his house in Soweto and I was requested by Winnie and others to provide security for Matiba they said there's no way that uh, Matiba can be guarded by the Clark security forces. Then I immediately touch, get in touch with the commander of Transkei Defense Force, then General Matanzima, to make sure that uh, he gets good soldiers and he must clear their, the weapons and their licenses with the ambassador of South Africa in Transkei mm -hmm. to make sure that there are no Hiccups. Fortunately, the Pretoria understood that uh, if anything were to happen to Matiba without being protected, mm. the, this would boomerang onto them. Yeah. So we protected Matiba until the MK members came back from exile. Even his rally, first big rally, biggest rally in KZN, it was uh, protected. Uh, meant by the special forces of the then Transkei Defense Force. We got in there like laborers and we were blue overalls and carrying brooms as if they are cleaning yeah. others are in the trees. But the person who nearly compromised us was, was uh, Mo, uh, the brother to Shabir. Yes. He came with weapons. We gave him weapons for these people to bring inside the stadium or that ground. Now we were stopped in the roadblocks. And then they opened the boot, they found that there were a lot of uh, R1s. And then it was told, what's going on? No, these are for uh, Transkei government, uh, Mr. Olumisa. They took him to police station, I think. Yeah, and then they called, mm -hmm. the brigadier called. I said, yes, I'm aware about those reports. Our members are there, we are protecting Matiba, we have been protecting him since, nine, since he was released in February. So if you want more details, phone the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I was just doing a thumb sucking, yeah. and then they released him. <laughs> yeah. So those were the years. Those were the years. And then at, at what point, uh, 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 Mr. Zimmerman, do you, do you become a member of the ANC? Because I, I think I recall that mm -hmm. you got so popular within the ANC ranks, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in 1994, they had list to parliament, you were on top of that list. Uh, in 1993, I was asked by Matiba and yeah. the ANC leadership of the Eastern Cape to 
campaign for the ANC. I think we were eight. It was Matiba, Tabumpeg, Steve Chwete, Esra Ramaphosa, Winnie Mandela, but we're eight. Yeah. So I moved all over the country. Um, 94, then they requested me to formally join the ANC and uh, be a member. And then in 1994, December, in their, in, in their conference in Bloemfontein, I received the most votes yeah. for the NEC. And, uh, and then, then I was also appointed the Deputy Minister of uh, Environment in 1994. We're not agree with that. I mean, you received the top vote and the best they can give you is Deputy Minister. No, no, no. I was appointed a Deputy Minister before, before, after the yeah. election. Oh, after the election, and then and the, the conference mm. was, was, was much later. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, the general, and then you go on to, to the uh, TRC, where you reveal what you had just said about the yeah. corruption, corruption, alleged corruption that you had, uh, as, you know, uncovered mm. in the trans sky. Why did you feel the need to, to, to make those revelations uh, at, at the TRC? As, as a member of the NEC, of the ANC, it was, a decision was taken yes. that each person must go and narrate stories about the cruelty of apartheid, the corruption, and so on. And then I went to the TRC. This is where the misunderstood, uh, misunderstanding cropped up. I went to the TRC and I submitted my testimony. Yes to a copy, copies of my testimony to the President Matiba and Deputy President Mpegi two weeks before I went to the TRC. And then when I went, when I was in front of Bishop Tutu and others, I said, I'm here to ask the Commission to compensate the families of the then Transkai Defense Force who were killed in an abortive coup supported by Pretoria uh, in order to, for their own, after they were approached by the former leaders of Transkai. Mm -hmm. And then I had to give reasons to justify in the first instance, why did we have to intervene as military? Mm -hmm. Then I started to narrate the history mm -hmm. of, uh, of what, of the circumstances mm -hmm. which led mm -hmm. to us to intervene. Well, well, I think the, my, uh, uh, the fact that I mentioned the name of Saul Kersner, it looks like uh, the Congress panicked yeah. beyond <laughs> comprehension. Yeah. And, and then I, I told them that Saul Kersner paid two million to the cabinet of Transkai in exchange for gambling rights. And then this information, this was the reason why we removed the, the entire cabinet. Because they each received 50,000. Then we, I tabled the copy of the, the Standard Bank, of the Bank of Transkai, I think, yeah, Bank of Transkai, which said, then I read it out, K.D. Matanzima received so much, Chief George Matanzima received so much, Stella Stau received so much, Mr. Letlaga received so much. And so on, all those, the entire cabinet. cabinet yes. And then when I was, uh, after that, I'm called by the president, uh, deputy president, of my both force and myself, oh, but why are you accusing Stella Star of corruption? I said, I, I read my testimony there. Mm -hmm. Are you sure that you, he says, the media is saying, I said, the media, I'm not in the media, read what I said. Mm -hmm. with the motivation that I mentioned those names was to justify for the commission to make sure that the families of the deceased soldiers were killed in an abortive coup are compensated. Yes. That's, it. That's the gist of it. And Stella knows that uh, we removed her for that. Mm -hmm. Everybody in South Africa and the world knows that. There's, it's not a, a revelation. Yes. Why are you saying it's, it's treated as, a, as if it's a revelation? Then Sisi, we parted uh, ways on that afternoon. Then I'm watching news in the evening. Kada Asman, 
seemingly is talking a lot of rubbish and nonsense, saying Olomisa must be disciplined and so on. He can't accuse a fellow cabinet minister. I said, these people, are they crazy? Then around 1 a.m., Madiba called me. No, Bandu, just uh, apologize for what we have said. Mm. Uh, that would let me convince your colleagues and so on. I said, no, Dada, it cannot be like that. Because you, you seem not to have read the testimony with which I taped in your test two weeks, three weeks ago. And then he says it's going to be difficult. We are making things difficult for him. I said, no. As a matter of principle, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not a sellout. I've never been. If you are saying I must do this, that means I the decision we took collectively, soldiers of the then Transkei Defense Force, was wrong. How will those soldiers look when they see me in the street look at me? I said there will be no apology. But if this embarrasses you as a, as a cabinet member, please, you can remove me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If the ANC doesn't want me in the organization, welcome. That, but that will not be the end of all of this. Mm -hmm. We parted ways. And then later on, I went to USA with the Mbeki uh, delegation on ALCO by, by National Commission. Mm -hmm. I was representing the Department of Environment. Then we came back, and then while I was at the airport, my driver said, Mr. Mandela has been looking for me. I said, let's go. And then I arrived at Houghton. He was with uh, Mr. Sisulu. And then he broke the news that, Bantu, uh, uh, I've decided to, uh, to do a cabinet reshuffling. Mm -hmm. In reshuffling uh, my cabinet, I've decided to drop you. you. I do not know who writes that I, I know, not a problem. And then I left, uh, and then later on, they, Solas Kweya, who, who was in charge of the DC, because I objected to Kadasma that he can preside over my fate mm -hmm. after he had already taken a position. Yes. Solas Kweya said, I must come to uh, DC. Then I said, no, ANC cannot preside over this. No member of the ANC is qualified to discipline me because I was, what I said is was under oath. And secondly, there's a conflict of interest here. The ANC also benefited from Saul Kessner. Yes. Now I'm suspicious that when I mentioned the name of Saul Kessner, all of you panicked beyond comprehension for that reason bring an, an independent person, and uh, they refused. So I told them, then Jeremy, what was it? Uh, it was assistant secretary, the lady, uh, I forget. Uh, he went to TV, all of is lying. Uh, we never received money from the Sol Kresna and so on. Following day, Matiwa says, aren't we correct? We received uh, two million rand, mm -hmm. but uh, we will not apologize to him for that. And then I went to the NEC for to, to make a, a, a case for myself yes. after the DC, because I didn't uh, waste my time with the DC, list, uh, giving them whatever. And I said, I'm objecting to you. Then the NEC, I was asked to make a presentation to them. I said, there's nothing to add. There will be no apology. I was sober when I said that. Read my testimony. If it means I have to go, good luck. And I took my briefcase and left. So in the, in the actual NEC, as, as you were deliberating over this issue, did you get a sense that there were some NEC members <coughs> that, were, that were in only, agreement with you? It's only who was the premier of Popo no who was the premier of uh, Pumala, Pumala. Matthew's post. It was Matthew Post uh, yes. who said, Do we know what we are about to do? Mm -hmm. Have you read General Bandu's testimony and so on? 
He was the only one because uh, Matiba was there. And the, all these illuminaries when he was seated in the table there. Yeah. But I didn't have a, uh, didn't uh, care them for them because I could see that they had already taken a decision. Mm -hmm. And let 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 them go jump. There will be no apology. So even with Matthew Posa warning about the consequences of what they are about to do, they still couldn't budge. They couldn't budge, but these days, you know, I'm celebrating when I see them on t watch them on TV and I'm drinking water or coffee, uh, listening to them talking about corruption. I said, oh, by the way, the, the mere mentioning of the word corruption it was the one which led me to leave the ANC. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I said, welcome to the club, comrades. Yeah. Now they are accusing each other now. Yeah. The yeah. real accusation. Yeah. And then after expansion, uh, Major General, you, you, you go on to form uh, the UDM mm -hmm. with Mr. Rolf Mayer. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm more interested, why Mr. Rolf Mayer? Where, what, what was your relation to him at the time? Had you worked with him closely before that? Why did you go into this alliance in the formation of the UDF? The United Democratic Movement was formed by two movements. Yes. The movement led by us called a National Consultative Forum. Mm -hmm. After I left ANC, some people said I must establish or start a political party. So I moved to all nine provinces and I got a thumbs up. And then at the same time, Ruth Mayer was uh, in the government of national unity. Yes. And when De Clark and Martinez van Scalveig took a decision to withdraw from the government of national unity, Rolf Mayer uh, was not happy, and I think Big Porter and other ministers. And they eventually withdrew as national party. So then Rolf Mayer started his own new movement. And when I read the, the, the their vision and uh, mission and compare mine also, I could see that there were similarities because they are, were quoting mm -hmm. the constitution, the new constitution. Yes. Uh, fortunately, I think I bumped into him uh, in Pretoria and then out of the blue he said, man, we must have coffee. We had coffee at uh, the stadium in Pretoria, Loftus. Loftus, yes. And then we had to look at the notes. He had his team, I had my team. And then I said, no, let's go back and report to our structures. And we met again, second meeting, which was big, at uh, Valdem. Mm -hmm. There's an island there, the Valdem. We look at the notes and said, okay, okay, okay. I said, oh, fine. After all, the buzzword now is to integrate South Africans. Mm -hmm. Black and white must work together. You were champ the champion of our constitution, drafting the constitution. You worked with the ANC. We were part of those discussions at Cordesa. There's no harm. Here is the constitution. And both of us are saying our values must be based on our national constitution. Yes. That's how we, we decided to, to meet and then we launched the UTM, I think it was at Nasrek, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then later he withdrew as a member, I think uh, after 1999 election because of a family matter. Then he concentrated on doing his consultation, peacekeeping and negotiations in in Asia and other countries, being sent by the ANC government to do those uh, work. He's still working for them now. I think he later joined the ANC, Pete Porter joined the ANC, and some cabinet ministers of the National Party joined the ANC. But uh, he, he, I can say, he is uh, one of the few Africaners who is a thinker. And uh, he's not an excited fellow. Yeah. And uh, he's not shy to propose suggestions. Uh, I 
always meet him in, in the airport now these days. I said, how, how are the comrades in corruption yeah. <laughs> treating you? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. He says, no, 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 I'm not involved with politics, but uh, I still advise them. So, so he is more closer to the ruling party now, and this, of course, his best friend is the president of the country. Mm. Did you not feel betrayed though when he left? No. The he, 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 the reason why he left it was personal. Yes. Related to his family. Yes. So I understood him and I knew about it. Okay. Okay. And then uh, maybe mention are you are you happy? with the performance of the UGM since its formation in 1997 up to now because what is becoming clear is that it, at, at, at okay. least it's, it's the, the road graph is yeah, on a slope, slippery slope. slope. Yeah. <laughs> so, so and in fact, maybe in, uh, as a second part of that question, what is causing this slippery slope, mm. uh, this downward spiral, uh, if I may put it that way, according to your own analysis? I think we did well in 19... 99. Yes. Uh, for us to have sent about 14 MPs when the climate was not conducive to do so, just be, 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 be informed that, uh, or rather, you are aware that at the time when UDM was established, we had these international figures like Mandela, Sisulus, and many others. Mm -hmm. But uh, we managed to cover a niche for ourselves in the space of new democracy. And then when they saw that we are a threat, they came up with the floor crossing legislation. Mm -hmm. yes. And I look at those guys now who crossed to join the ANC who were bought. They are occupying high positions in the ANC today. One is one of the, one is the, is the presiding officer in parliament. One is the top advisor of the president, Mr. Kornov, mm -hmm. and uh, others were appointed as ambassadors. So you could see that, uh, in terms of human resources, they, 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 they have, it affected us mm -hmm. as well as financial. So I had to change the strategy because as, as, as a soldier, you have to if Plan A didn't work. Are you sure about Plan B? And then I said, no, I'm not going to focus anymore to recruit mm. people from other parties, but I'd rather grow the youth. Hence the emergence of uh, the likes of Kwakwa. Hence the emergence of the current Secretary General, who is 35 years. He was writing his master's last November, December. A and many others which are already councillors but they have diplomas and degrees. So I'm satisfied with the role of uh, nurturing that crew. Uh, I, like last week, for the first time, I felt relief when, I, when we were launching our manifesto. Mm -hmm. When we were drafting the manifesto, could see that there are young brains and so on. And uh, I'm satisfied we are turning around the, the wheel. So, there's no way that uh, the UTM will disappear in the political scene of South Africa, especially that we have been betting and wet and, and uh, uh, we've, we've been occupying the crease and betting on a wicket of anti-corruption and promoting ethics of good governance. If you listen to the UDM speaking in the public or parliament, you would think that is one of the big opposition parties because we are focused, we are identifying <coughs> a, an issue. That's why we targeted PIC and uh, Cyril Ramaphosa had to agree when we asked him to appoint a commission of inquiry. And then the party commission came out and came up with the evidence that all is not rosy there, mm -hmm. and he suggested rules and regulations to be changed. <coughs> it was the UTM which uh, said floor crossing legislation must go, it's no longer in the statute books. It was the UTM which said if you can appoint a president or elect a president secretly through a secret ballot, why must we not do so when we say he must go 
uh, vacate the seat. Yes. Then the Constitutional Court agreed with us. It was the UTM who recently, which was leading uh, in court to say, Department of uh, Energy, uh, ESCOM, Mr. President, in your government, you cannot allow that the police are going to be affected by load shedding. The hospitals, schools, unless you want to do to, to, to a sort of a genocide type of thing. Mm -hmm. When people are being operated in the hospitals, then the lights goes off and there's no alternative. That was UTM. It was UTM also which uh, showed the door to the former chairperson of uh, IEC, Mrs. Tlagula, after she was found uh, wanting when it comes to renting or leasing a, a property for IEC. We have hit them for sixes and fours. Yes. During the, all the time we are occupied, we are still going to do so. Mm. And, and interestingly, uh, General, with your manifesto, you, you put corruption destroys our freedom as the yes. catchphrase. Why, why is corruption the main issue? If all, all the other <coughs> social and socio-economic issues that we are dealing with, for instance, I mean, many people have targeted the issue of land, jobs, and load shedding as the main message that they're driving, but you chose that corruption, which people would say, but it's been, it, corruption is not new. Why would you go that route? You don't have to go far. Mm -hmm. We've just spent one billion rands investigating uh, the, the, the culprits who were behind the state capture. Mm -hmm. And the Zondo Commission is there. And we, if we want to, to recapture the lost ground when it comes to running our institutions, we will have to put that document as our Bible, which will take us out of this area. The emphasis of the findings of that is talking about lack of accountability from the top executive as well as even to the parliament. Uh, even where he says, the Zondo Commission recommends that we need to have separate elections for a president and also amend in general the, the electoral act to introduce constituency-based system mm -hmm. where the people can be accountable to their constituencies. Yes, the ANC government has betrayed the people of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever thought that the liberators of yesteryear would, instead of addressing the backlogs and imbalances of the past Caucasian by the separate development policy of the National Party are now in the vanguard of looting state resources for, the, for their party and for themselves. It reminds me of what uh, uh, former president of the ANC, Oliver Tam, who said, the ANC would be, would be the most worst corrupt party than the National Party. He was warning us to say, don't go that route. Mm. But now for them to sit at Lutuli House and say, let's go and get so much from this transaction of building the Dupi and Kusile through partner with uh, Hitachi and let their investment arm, Chancellor House, who has not even one single engineer to be part of that. So he took away that 8 billion rand in the process. Mm -hmm. That is Hitachi and Chancellor House. We don't know how much ANC got from that. Yes. But thanks to the American courts, which revealed that that transaction was corrupt, today the two major plants are not generating electricity as it was expected. Where is the money? Said look to the house. You go to Bosasa, these people used state monies, uh, used Bosasa as a conduit 
to the leaders from to for Cyril and Dashes and some ministers and the party. Saying over rallies, conferences, they use state resources, money. That money, if it was properly channeled, you wouldn't have now potholes. You would have have tied many roads which are in the rural areas of Limpongo, Kwazulu, and Eastern Cape. So this corruption destroys our freedom is relevant. Yeah. That document to prove that they are not they still want to be continue with their legacies uh, with this corruption. The Zondo Commission is gathering dust in the executive offices of this country and in parliament, mm -hmm. in speaker's office. Mm -hmm. And then on the issue of coalition government, uh, you, you are one of those that you say that there's an emerging consensus that there won't be an outright winner in this uh, forthcoming national and, and the provincial elections. If that indeed becomes the case where there's no outright winner, where does UDM locate itself in, in that space where in the ANC falls below 50%, you get whatever percentage that you get, and then there, need, there needs to be some form of a coalition government. What, what would be the conditions, if any, uh, for UDM to go with any other party into a coalition government? I think uh, if the ANC doesn't win outright, there will be about three streams mm -hmm. which will be which we must look at. ANC Alliance Partners, Stream One, Stream Two, led by the DA and other Monshot partners. And then there is a, another pet stream which is still not structured. Mm -hmm. Where you see those ones on the left of the ANC. The UDM's position is clear. We are not going to go to any discussion where we are talking about positions. The priority is to table our manifesto and say we are arguing, read our manifesto, that we are saying the rural areas of South Africa, which were once homelands, have never been integrated into a developed infrastructure of the, uh, developed by the then National Party government. We start from there. You can go to Eastern Cape today, you go to the rural areas of Northwest, you go to the uh, areas of Lipopo, Wasurunata, you can see that there are signs here that you are on a third world. Yeah. Yet these people, when we were campaigning in 93, 94. We said, guys, for the first time, we will be now one country, unitary state. Better life Therefore, for yes, better life for all. The budget will now, for the first time, uh, be look after our needs. So if that party, whether it's ANC or PAC or SAP or EFF, MK, or even DA for that matter, is ready to, for us to address for the first time, the backlogs and, Im and the imbalances of the past in a structured way. If you are talking about infrastructure development of South Africa, I will be proposing to say, let us have a map mm -hmm. and then prioritize, sequence them, and then where is the budget going to come from? Be pragmatic in your approach. Don't just make noise and promises people that I'm going to form a coalition with so and so. I can't form a coalition with so and so. I've seen and I've traveled to the, on a number of study, uh, work study uh, trips to, to, to look into this issue of coalition. Mm -hmm. If you go to US, uh, to, to even the US, you'll find that uh, the Democrats have, is, a, is, a, is a combination of many parties. Mm -hmm. They took a decision to take, uh, to form the, the, the Democrat, call them Democrats. But if you look at other pa people there, they've got their own party. Well, they used uh, an umbrella to say they were Democrats. In fact, and, and then they divided seats according to 
they are different parties. But in fact, sorry General, to interrupt you because <laughs> you, you are actually rushing to my next question, but maybe let me jump onto it so that <laughs> we can localize it. What happened to that? Because you were leading something like that, where you were saying as opposition parties, mm -hmm. let's come together, but we keep our identities, but we have this umbrella yeah. body uh, that we campaign mm -hmm. under towards mm -hmm. this election as this one unit. What happened to that? Unfortunately, while we were discussing that, selling that, the DA leader in his conference mm -hmm. announced that they are going to shoot to the moon. Yeah. And he said he's going to call his private sector mm -hmm. to round us mm -hmm. as leaders. And we were surprised and then we said, okay, good luck. Go to the moon. Tell us when you are back. Yeah. We'll look into that. Yeah. But uh, in terms of uh, building South Africa, rebuilding South Africa, we must have a, take a non-partisan approach. Yeah. Because if we are going to be partisan, we are going to work in silos. So it is for that reason that if I'm participating in the coalition talks, put the needs of my constituents and then agree. But uh, so far, I say they will be three streams. Where will UDM be in those three streams? We have left that open when we say we don't want to choose who to work with, we don't want to prescribe, because we have seen in countries like Germany, the Christians would work with hardline socialists mm -hmm. in the interest of the people, not in the interest of their ideology or parties. So I'm flexible, we are flexible on that. Yeah. But, but then, you know, in, in, in that, in, in this uh, thing that you were uh, trying of this umbrella body and then mm. having different uh, parties inside it, how were you planning to deal with egos? Because I, I guess probably why it didn't work. At the end of the day, individual political party leaders have their own egos. Some are even jealously. Uh, guarding the, 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 you know, their own parties. Some feel that their parties are bigger than others, so why must we compromise ourselves? How are you going to deal with that? We were to correct that by saying, look at the local government chaos. Mm -hmm. It was caused by this thing of wanting to put the interest of yourself or your party. This time around, the voters of South Africa have said, never again shall we have uh, all our eggs in one basket or that uh, one party state because they have realized that one party dominance breeds corruption. Mm. Therefore, we want to spread the power amongst you. So be sober when you are discussing this. We are frustrated as voters because we were promised. Mm. And then it turned out that these were empty promises. So it was going to be the motivation to say, leave your ego, ego there. If you don't want to be part of this, go and contest on your own. Yeah. And then we would have agreed then on a common manifesto. If you listen to the parties currently who are launching their manifestos, we speak more or less the same thing. Yeah. But we differ. Where UTM came in, we identify a problem, not to lament too much, but come up with a suggested solution. So that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and then I hear in those discussions uh, that your protege, so to speak, the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema, who has looked up to you for various reasons. I mean, yes. since the formation of the EFF, we know you were there from the start. Apparently, that's this is what I'm gathering that he was one of the people who were not too convinced uh, by what you were trying to build. No, the, the EFF. Uh, we never, we never discuss this in detail. Yes. I just wrote, I like to write, mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you must have noticed that. Yeah. And the, all my writings I always like to share with the public. Yes. So I wrote that and circulated it. We had not finally set around. You yeah. can't accuse EFF for that. Yeah. In fact, the EFF and, I, and, and the UTM and other parties were responsible for chasing away ANC in 2016 local government elections, yes. chasing them away in the metros. Yes. We worked together. Again, when we were to talk about uh, 
state capture, we went together to the Concord. When we were to talk about Sholos to leave, we were together. We made things easy for the ANC to recall president. Mm -hmm. uh, so we never discussed or sat down with uh, formally discuss that. Yeah. But when Stian Hazen, instead of responding to what we're proposing, went his way, we didn't even uh, make, make a noise about that. We said, no, no, no. Go back to the moon. When you're back, let's have coffee. And why did UGM not uh, join the Monetary Pact? Well, now it's called the Multi Party. Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's precisely because we suspected that the big brother mentality is still around us. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want us. I said, let us discuss this as equals. Yes. To say, we rather have this umbrella and we register it with IEC but you will keep your seats, mm. your identity. But what is going to bind us? Where are we having common interest? Mm -hmm. If we talk about uh, service delivery, if we talk about promoting ethics of good governments, if we're talking about beefing up our security forces to deal with the crime we are having, if we talk about uh, the issue of land, in fact, in my manifesto, and the land and economy said you cannot separate economy policy from the land and property. So let us have a national dialogue after election. High on the agenda should be our economic policy, mm -hmm. because since 1994 this country has ever has never had a consensus on what kind of macroeconomic policy must we have, because what ANC normally comes up with. The Tripartite Alliance, Alliance Partners, SACP and COSAT would attack that. Obviously, an investor would say, these guys don't know what they are doing. Mm. There is no certainty on policies. Yeah. So this dialogue is talk about economy. High on the agenda is land and property. The issue of education, what pillars do we want to see in South Africa producing students who would be on their feet and do the work and themselves and become entrepreneurs. I speak from experience on that because in 2021 I requested, uh, not 2021, 2001, I requested Madiba to join me and Umtata and open up a project called Tutuga. Uh, before that, I was in an NGO producing study guides for maths, accounting, and English for grades 9, 10, 11, 12. And the Kada Asmal's uh, department then approved those study guides, and then we went to SAICA, South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. We said we want to produce more black chartered accountants if we are to be in charge of the economy of this country. And uh, Professor Ngutlu and the University of Forte approved that. And we said to Karas, well, we don't want money from you. We know you, you don't have budget to, to, fund, to pay for study guides. We are going to go to the private sector. Private sector jumped in, pumped money. Tons and tons of uh, written material were printed throughout the country. As I'm speaking to you now, that project, Tutuka, has produced more than 2,000 black chartered accountants qualified. Those students who didn't qualify to go to university, at least they have got a background how to uh, handle their cash book, trial balance, ledger. If you start your own uh, small business, yes. you have that background. And then, General, maybe in terms of <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, you know some decision that you've taken uh, recently, well, uh, you've recently reviewed new uh, members that have joined the UGM, and mm -hmm. uh, there was one high-profile person, uh, being businessman, Mr. Uh, Mutunzi Mdwaba, who mm -hmm. made some serious revelations towards the end of last year about mm -hmm. alleged corruption by some senior yes, because his former colleagues. Yes, yes. Who has now joined? Uh, the, the UGM, did you go out on a recruitment or recruit him or did he join? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. uh, 
problem to avail his, his defense. He has never, I've never approached him. Yes. And, and say, please join us. I received a call after he confessed. He says, man, after I listened to, to your deputy president, Nabamzi Kwangwa, after the sauna, mm -hmm. I felt that uh, of all these parties which have been approaching me to join them, I think UDM has got a, a, a direction. Mm -hmm. Then I said, come and let's, let's meet. And then I met him. And then he said he's coming up with other uh, group, group of people. Others, these are more uh, professionals. And these professionals, some of them have been board members of serious institutions in this country, like TPSA and so on. Mm. I said, this is an opportunity I cannot miss. And then we agreed. No. He's not demanding for any position, but he says he thinks that uh, he can be of value. And then I immediately, after he called me, I went to Google. I said, sure, this is an asset yes. for the country. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that this person, he was even preparing documents and policy position for the government at G20 level. Mm -hmm. He was also the vice president of uh, 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 labor, international labor organization, yes. uh, and also he has traveled. He has produced many papers. That are, and that's why they are calling him professor. So I said, this is the kind of man I need when you, especially when you deal with fighting corruption. He's at home here. He's welcome. Yes. That's what we have been doing in the last. 30 years. Yes. I, I, hopefully you're not going to be parachuting him to the top of positions. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. The conference of the UTM, which we are planning to have end of this year, national conference, people are elected. But as a party, it's always wise that you build up your, uh, your intellectual capacity. It's people like him we want to in the UTM. Uh, in the, if, if, for instance, he wishes to go to Parliament, we will make sure that uh, we allocate things which he can talk to the nation about. I think he would be an expert mm. in talking about the economy, call it industrial policy, employment policy. I think this is his specialty because we don't have those policies currently. Yes. That's why when we have been struggling to even produce 10 black industrialists in the last 30 years. Mm. Do you believe he, the allegations that he has made against uh, these ministers? Those fellows, you, you cannot dismiss yeah. <laughs> what he has said. Yeah because it's in their vein, where they can sit and plan at Lutuli House level to say, let's get a business from that department, let's get the money, millions from that municipality in order to come and pay for the salaries of our staff. I mean, the Zondo Commission's findings oh. has fingered the party and its leaders. So, in that context, I wouldn't write those allegations off. Mm. So, in the, in the conference that we're talking about, uh, Major General, that is coming in December, the UTM conference, will you be standing? I wish this time around these fellows can say, you have done well for you, just go and play golf and, and, and travel mm. the whole world. That's my wish. But you know it. If the structures are saying no, you see, once you accept to be a leader of a political party, yeah, I think it's only one fellow, who, one one person who who succeeded in telling the, the structure that no Mandela, mm. that I will serve one term, mm. while others people were saying, oh Jesus, who's going to take over and so. On. Mm. But I think I've, 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 I've done well to groom the people in the UTM. So, so personally, I, I don't, I'm not married to, to be a life 
president of the UDM. When they are ready, they must show up the hand and say, yeah, we want so and so. That's democracy. He's no longer that philosopher for Lomisa of carrying an R1 rifle in his back. But but will you do a Mandela and say no, regardless of what the structures say, even if let's say overwhelmingly 90% of the UTM structures are saying no, no, Major General, we still need you, we feel like uh, we can benefit from your wisdom. You want I'll, 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 I'll weigh options. Yeah. One of the options is to look at the 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 political dinosaurs which are at union buildings. So. Yes. And to say, all right, uh, they are still there. And then systematically you hand over the power to the youth. For instance, you hardly see me on TV in the last two or three years. Yes, Kwangwa has been more I said, to the front. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I've got, I I've did cover a niche for myself in the space of politics in South Africa. Former military dictator, now a converted democrat, but this is your terrain, get in. Yeah. I don't have any problem if he's, uh, he's now asked. The Secretary General, I'm busy now handing over power in a way to him, saying, be visible, go and talk to TV, I'm sure you've seen him in social media. Yeah, but do, do you believe that uh, this cohort of new leaders that you are grooming and you have groomed can stand on their own without you? Because you see, the problem becomes, uh, Major General, you've led the party for so long mm -hmm. such that at some point there becomes a confusion mm -hmm. between the party and the individual, mm -hmm. uh, Major General Romesa. So certain people would almost say, we don't see the UDM surviving without. without yeah. Well, that's perception yeah. and opinion. You can't run away from that. But uh, South Africa, all political parties yes. are centered around a personality, one personality. Yes. If you go to uh, ANC, they will say, Ish, what's going to happen if Cyril is charged for Palapala? Pala? Mm. Are we going to make it? Mm. And then you go to other parties, EFF and so on, people will say, Ish, will it make it without so and so? Mm. So there is that perception. Yes. But the sooner we adopt what I'm doing, train, groom people and encourage them to go to school. We've got, for instance, now counselors who are from what graduates of Forte, Wusu University and others. That's the area where we must focus. So if, for instance, when I leave this place, I got a car accident or somebody shoot me, so what? I'm UDM will continue. Yes. It's in safe hands. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you set out at the beginning when you formed uh, the UDM Major General to, to lead it for this long? Or in fact, maybe ask differently, did you have a succession plan from inception of UDM? Yes, we have a succession because it's controlled by a conference. Yes. Succession plan, you must not make a mistake to think that a succession plan is a, is a succession plan for an individual. Mm -hmm. But if you allow the conference to transparently elect leaders, that's, that's, that's a succession plan. Mm -hmm. It's risky also to say you are going to groom a particular individual. Well, I had to expose Kwangwa early to only run with the show. Now, this is other youth. You mm. will see them also in the in parliament. If we get seats, they will be in the, especially in provincial legislatures. We will have the youth. So, in terms of uh, you asking me that, all right, eh, Olumisa didn't do any succession plan. Uh, on paper, I would say yes, you're correct. But scrutinize UTM closer and see what we are doing. And, and then, in terms of your running of the party over the years, there's been many talks in public and emanating from several events that have unfolded within the party. 
Uh, I mean, if I were to just reference one, I mean, the departure of the likes of Lichfield, uh, Chabala, the people who have, uh, you know, glowing uh, struggle. Yeah, uh, what a powerful woman. Yes. Why did she leave? In fact, maybe let me be direct. Oh, why did powerful. she leave? Why did she leave UTM? No, somebody within the within the party, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Gave us an article, newspaper article, which suggested that while she was in the defense, mm -hmm. she was embroiled into malfeasance of some kind. Mm -hmm. And then we said, no, in terms of our constitution, mm -hmm. Once you get a complaint, then you give to a person who is accused to so respond to this. I think she got that. And then the next thing we receive a letter of resignation. We lost a good, powerful woman. Mm. Was it not paging? Because other people would read it that way, that she was being paged. No, 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 no. It was, the lady was hardly there for, for six months. True. Uh, but the, what she did in the defense was viewed by the party serious. And then we said, she was experiencing us. She opted not to. Yeah, she opted to leave. No patching. We had nothing against her because we were impressed with her experience and knowledge and the confidence and articulation of issues. Yes. That's a big loss to the party. What would you say, uh, Mr. Stengel, to the perception that, well, leave your military dictatorship days, but mm -hmm. even in UDM, that he, the dictatorship is, it is in your veins, in that you can lead this long without allowing others. Well, this is the perception, this is not me. <laughs> this is what is generally out there that no, uh, Major General will miss. But you will, credit, you will credit the UDM for being one, if not the political party, which has got no internal squabbles. Yes. And then people are disciplined. If, for as I look at the Lodge of Rome Manifesto, I will say to you guys, at 11 sharp, I will be speaking. And by 11 o'clock, everybody was seated. By 1 o'clock, we said it's lunch, and everybody was eating. 3 o'clock, we cleaned the venue. I mean, two o'clock, clean the venue, and we go back home while it's still the light. Mm -hmm. So that is that kind of uh, discipline. If you want to say it's because of military, yes, I say I learned a lot from military. And if you want to inculcate a culture of ownership among South African youth, I would favor for a, a national conscription. Mm. so that they can be taught how lessons around patriotism. They can be taught on planning cycle. If you want to go to point A by such and such a time, you work your timings backwards. And then you start saying, where are we going to get the tools in order to reach that destination? A thing which is lacking, unfortunately, to the ruling party is empty promises, follow up, how do we implement this policy? No, if, if, if that's a perception, I accept it uh, greatly. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compliment. Yes. Unfortunately, we are not going to remove that planning cycle I studied for many years. How do you run an institution? That's why in Transkai, when we took over, we issued one statement. Everybody fall, fell on line. No one is going to demand that he must be given money for lunch if you come to ask for assistance or a nip of brandy, mm -hmm. or that if you are a chief, you are going to demand money or sheep to be given to you, and so on. It worked. If you are working and we say, Go, oh, you got a tender to fix a road, the inspectors must go and see that before that person is paid. You can't, we wouldn't do what is happening now. Mm -hmm. Where you are paid even before you have started to build a foundation, 
Ah, no. It can happen. Ah, no. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would say, call me a dictator if you like. Yeah. But no, that's not wrong. That's not right. Mm, and and you, you sound like someone who would be in favor of what they term benevolent dictatorship. What are your views on, on such? I mean, for instance, many people say the president of Rwanda, uh, Paul Kagame, is a benevolent dictator. Well, I don't know. You guys, you can analyze me, my approach, but uh, I don't stand the nonsense. Yeah. So, when we had a, a waste management problem in Eastern Cape, I said, for instance, during public holidays, you clean your environment, close environment, your house and streets, and the trucks would come and collect that rubbish, borrow it them from military, police, Soldiers will be responsible for cleaning highway from Zimpul to Kaimap, from Queenstown to Port St. John's R61, and everybody must be busy that day. Yes. Tata was spotless clean, all the 28 towns. One message. If you are not known to sit on a we are a that's fairly you want to please everybody. You can't run a country like that. No, no. no. Mm. So, benevolent, yes, to some extent, because we didn't, for instance, we didn't introduce military courts. Mm -hmm. We said the fate of those who are involved in corruption will be decided by the independent courts. Yeah. We didn't put soldiers as judges and so on. Yeah. And also that uh, your fate, you are free to bring your own legal team defend you, whether you are a soldier uh, being accused of whatever, you are free to bring your legal representative. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why the coup, the, the, the coup of trans guy was popular. But we draw a line, we draw a line. Yes. But don't be a nuisance to your neighbor, to anybody. Yes. Stick on your new lane. Yes. Mm -hmm. Major General, why did the UDM vote for the ousting of, uh, well, now former church president of the Western Cape, uh, Mr. John Trump? Well, because, I mean, the reason I'm asking this question, many people right. appear to have been shocked yes. by your yes. vote in that particular regard, especially mm -hmm. judging in how you voted in mm -hmm. similar issues such as yes. the on this On this particular yeah. one. We've had a tiff with the Chief Justice, mm -hmm. uh, in particular my deputy, mm -hmm. to the extent that we wrote to then Chief Justice Mkwe mm Mkwe -hmm. to say the Judge President of the Western Cape is interfering in a case, particular case and we don't think a, a, a judge can behave in the manner in which he did. And then we wrote a letter to Chief, Mkwe, Chief Justice Mukwe, mm -hmm. uh, I think in his capacity as Chief Justice or Chairperson of the Joint Standing, I mean, Judicial Services Commission. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was the only reason. I didn't even go to Parliament. I was in the CBC that day, yes, yes. looking for votes, mm -hmm. campaigning there. Mm -hmm. Pankwa was in Parliament. And uh, normally, I would be lying. We don't normally discuss how to vote mm. and block it. We say it for your conscience. Okay. So it's obvious that uh, my deputy would have not done that. Mm -hmm. So I was not in, in the house. Yeah. But I'm telling you, there was something which I'm not going to mention. We wrote a letter. Chief Justice Mukwe Mukwe then, for him to intervene. And we say, is this the law of this country? Full stop. But maybe you must... Uh, no, 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 there's you, no need to do it. No, no, but maybe at the level of... I, I just want to understand, Major General, the issue. Do you remember the particular case? Even if you don't necessarily tell us what is it that uh, Chief Bishop did at that time. No, it's well about... Uh, the Judge Thropper was not presiding officer. Mm 
of that particular case, but yeah. there were other uh, uh, judges, judges out of his division. Yes, but uh, the report we got from Kwangwa, the report we got from the, his legal team was that the behavior of, of the, the judge president was not good. The case involved the, the lady who was claiming that he has married to Kwangwa. Kwangwa said, no, we've never been married. Mm -hmm. It was around that. Yeah. So we were a little bit shocked to say why the the judge president would, take he, would, would, would even to say I he, he says this 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 member of parliament uh, I'm going to get him and so on and so on. that that kind of language was was what brought you uh, then we wrote to uh, the chief justice but did you do you before uh, uh, jumping to uh, uh, then chief justice Mokwen, Mokwen, did you engage with him JP no, no 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 I don't. Uh, I don't get involved in those things. Yeah. No, no, but maybe to try to understand why he was doing no, whatever he was doing. No, no, no. You didn't feel it necessary at the time. I mean, it's, it's unethical yes. that you you talk about issues which uh, have been happening during the briefing. Yes. Of, that's a terrain of the lawyers. Yes. But uh, because uh, Kwango was very angry about what the judge said, yeah. and then I said, "All right, let's." I advised him. I said, "Let's refer right. this matter. Maybe yes." Yeah. Uh, judge Flope, I know him very well. Yes. We respect him. Uh, by the way, he was a lecturer at University of Transkei then. Mm. I still use his dissertation paper mm -hmm. uh, called uh, "Legitimate Expectation." Mm. That means if you promise me that you are going to increase our salaries, mm. and then I can, and then you don't fulfill, then I can go to court and say there was a legitimate expectation of my on my part that I would get a salary increase. That is his paper. He's a, he's a very clever, talented person, mm -hmm. but on this particular one, I don't blame my deputy who was in the house. Mm -hmm. Because he had already, I had already written a letter then, before, long before. Yes, yes. But General, Major General, do you believe that what he was sanctioned for at a high level, which emanates uh, uh, to his alleged uh, interference in the in the issues of uh, JZ at the time, uh, do do you believe that justice was done? In fact, what is your view on what he was accused of specifically? You are talking to a right person or to a wrong person. Mm. I was the only member of parliament in this country whom I said when we discussed the Tulima Donjala report. Ngamalala uh, was seated there. Mm. I was on the podium. I said, Ngamalala, give us a mandate to discuss your exit to Pume with dignity. Mm -hmm. this this case is very strong against you. Mm. So, but, but I was looking at a situation where we can come up with a deal for him. Mm. Resign, don't get involved in politics. We will look into this 200 million which is you are accused of because you didn't sign yourself. Mm. These are the architects, the DGs are involved, but accountability, yes you can. But you would have to say yes, not just reject. Guess what? Later on, he left his ANC members under the bus, Cholos, mm. and said, "No, I'm ready to pay for for that Uganda's upgrade." Yeah. Yes, but if you look at what has happened to Thorpe. The Judicial Services Commission felt that he erred in terms of their ethics and so on. Mm. The courts which presided over his cases also did, were not in his side. The two senior judges at the court are the ones who were complaining. 
I don't know how, what, in what way you would, uh, you would have convinced Parliament mm -hmm. that uh, what he said was correct after having lost into that yeah, but he would, space of the Even like you say, this is for the people who think for themselves, who are independent, which is, by the way, uh, the argument that the EFF is using, that he was not given ample time to explain himself in a forum that is different, because he also argues that the other forums were, 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 were compromised in many ways. JSC is mainly his colleagues who already have preconceived uh, ideas about I his, his to be honest with you, I've never focused on that case. Yeah, yes. Mustn't waste your time. <laughs> no, I don't lie. I didn't focus, but all I know that Chase Judicial Services Commission, as well as the the courts, didn't defend him. Yeah. And, and it's a technical case. I was not it was, interested. Yeah, it was, it was very technical. I left it to the people who have got numbers. So yeah, got two seats. So yeah. I no difference would I have made anyway. Yeah, no, understood. <laughs> Maybe as we we round up, general, let's play a little. Uh, a fun game that I like here. I'll give you a, a multiple choice questions, just two options, and you can't say no. You must choose one, and, and, and then you will have to explain your answer. So, for instance, let's start uh, this way. Uh, 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 President Zuma or President Papos, who would you prefer? Uh, well, <clears throat> I've got historical relationship with Mamala. Mm -hmm. So, is, 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 I like his decisiveness. Mm -hmm. Cyril is a process person. And being a process person, sometimes he is viewed like he's weak and he doesn't take decisions early. Mm -hmm. Both of them, South Africa needed them. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any choice between them. No, no, you, I said you, you don't have that choice. You must, you must pick one. No, I, you, it's fine. You've no, explained. But, no, but I, I've got also my brains. Yeah. To 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 use, but I think uh, Zuma's is still the he has he has done better in certain areas, but Cyril. Besides this palapala thing, I mean, he was the person who was coming up nicely as a clean person. And, uh, but when he refused to unpack or, or, or table the CR17 monies, I lost a little bit of confidence. Palapala also, because any time he opened his mouth on Palapala, he was digging a hole for himself. So I wouldn't even say that there was an error of judgment on his part. But I thought that uh, he is not straight wise. Yeah. So I think I've answered that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. Pravin Kodano Ino Kodungwa. Now both of them are useless. Yeah. <laughs> Julius Balima or Musa Maimani? Ah, well, I, you can blame Holomisa as having played part yeah. in showing the EFF leadership yeah. direction. And they have, from day one when he invited me to the launch of his party. And also he's a very decisive person. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't agree with him when, on everything and style, but definitely I can't compare uh, 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 no. Juju, Juju is miles ahead. Yes, yes. Musa, I advised him as well. I yes. said, look, mm -hmm. this thing of you leading this organization and you always refer to federal uh, uh, council taking decisions. Introduce branch system mm -hmm. in every street, every location, township, cities. The DA will be strong 
But this thing of you, you guys choosing people from federal what what is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And if you champion that, you will never be used in this. Hardly two years after that, they chopped him. Yeah. Freedom Front Plus or IFP? Uh, Freedom Front Plus. You see, one thing I like about Freedom Front, because I'm not sure about the current leader of the IFP. Mm -hmm. If it was Telis, I would give you a different version. Mm -hmm. But with Freedom Front Plus, those guys are transparent. If they don't want you, they don't want you. If they accept your advice, they are. Of all the people who are debating in the sauna, for instance, recently, Runewald described the president and his government in a proper way. You may not agree with them, now there's Africaners, this and this and that, but when I analyze the situation, I don't put race. Mm. But you look at the, what they are doing, what is that NGO of theirs, uh, which was doing a private prostitution? Uh, uh, Afriforum. Afriforum is their baby. But those guys, you can see that they know their stuff. Administrative-wise, they are spot on. So you still need a person like Hronova to articulate position for that minority group here. IFP, uh, they are still in transition. During Guterres' time, at least when he stood up and spoke, everybody would hear him falling. With all his faults in the past, but he still commanded respect. You can see even in his funeral, the people who attended that funeral. So maybe the current leader of IFP should come to parliament mm -hmm. and lead IFP in parliament. But for him to be hoodwinked by the DA, which has chased pot blacks with potential, Azimogos, my manners, you name them. Mm -hmm. I think it was an error of judgment on their part. So between these two, I would say, Freedom Front, leave it there to talk his story there. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and compromise it. Yeah. Para para Onganza, which was the biggest scandal? Yeah, it's different. Para para was more a scandal where a president is violating the laws of the country. Mm -hmm. And when, when he's asked to answer questions, he's facilitated, he facilitated too much. And, uh, but the common denominator between Palapala and, and uh, okay. Kandla is that both leaders used their majority in parliament to squash or protect both of them. So to me, it's like 50-50. Yeah. Baby, finally now, General, uh, in terms of the UTM uh, as things stand, what is the future from where you stand? Where do you see UTM, say, after the elections and after its national conference, if it is not going far? Well, after the elections, I hope that the voters would have remembered what the UTM has done, notwithstanding that uh, we didn't have big numbers, because we have proved that you don't have to have big numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, but people uh, would cherish, uh, cherishing us on what we have done, because we selected our fights and we won most of them. and uh, we are not a party which follows anything that moves. Mm. We are consistent. So I hope uh, we will be rewarded. Whether you talk about corruption at PIC, corruption at IEC, uh, floor crossing legislation, ESCOM, uh, load shedding, you name it. So we were there. Mm. 
Mm. We, are, we have been occupying this Chris from 1999, and we are still occupying the Chris, and uh, we have hit them for threes and fours and sixes. And it looks as though now there are low hanging fruits out there. And uh, I'm sure those people would say no. After all, that leader of the UTM is the one which created a liberation, a liberation zone when it was not fashionable to do so. Yes. To the extent of training MK and APLA in Transkai bases and also send military instructors to go and train Mkondo Esizo in Uganda, which other homeland leader has ever done that? No. Consistency. And if you believe in a root, you protect it and continue. As a final parting shot, uh, Major General, soft, on a soft uh, note, I'm a long-suffering case, I should myself, I know you are a big one yourself, very close to the, the chairman as well. We are, we are suffering, we are not doing well. Eh? How, how, how are you coping under these tough times for the Amokusi family? Well, all of us, uh, I'm, I'm sure even the leadership of the, the, of the uh, of Kaiser Chiefs must be feeling the same. Mm. I am not sure, but I think that brand is too big. And we may have to seriously consider as fans of Kaiser Chiefs to formalize how do we advise the, the leadership about this, not depending on whether you are a friend or what, or when you are angry, you go to the social media and start shouting. But I think uh, we need perhaps to give advice on what how should the club is managed because the fans of Kaiser Chiefs are used to the, the hand of Dao when he was hands on. Mm. Maybe we should be the club should be looking at uh, professionalizing the management of the club. Mm. That means you outsource management of the club, but you retain the family as shareholders, mm -hmm. you don't tamper with that. Mm -hmm. Kaiser has built that empire for his family and also for the business of South Africa, because if Kaiser Chiefs comes to the city, the hotels are going to be full, the taxes are going to get money, garages are going to get money, these uh, stores are going to make money. But that, approach, that, that, that uh, product, we must jealously guard as a nation because Kaiser Chiefs is a national squad of some kind in inverted commas. Yes. So we cannot fold our arms and laugh and say, hey, it's, it's crumbling. Let us try this professionalized. You see, the, the Manchester United uh, under Ferguson, and many other clubs. Mm. You need a, a, a full-time manager to say, this is the contract, take us from here. We are ready with the check to assist you on whatever you want. If you want the player X, we will work out like Real Madrid would do so. Search that player who wanted here. Because what you are doing, what Kaiser Chiefs is to South Africa is, is promoting the economy in a big way. Mm -hmm. But you are very close to, to the chairman, uh, Mr. Kaiser Mutong. Have you never bounced some of no, these no, ideas no. with him? My close uh, association with Kaiser Mutong, we have uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk about UTM mm -hmm. to me. Nor do I talk about Kaiser Chiefs to him to say how to, to run your organization. Mm -hmm. No, the protocol mm -hmm. uh, must always be observed. Yes. So stay on your lane. Yeah. <laughs> 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 thank you very much for, thank you, for, for, thank for you. coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Major General Olomisa, the leader of the United Democratic Movement, the UTM. Join us next time when we have another person of interest. Salute.